think this whole independent woman shit is a scam. Hear me out. I've been working since the age of 16 and I'm pretty successful in my professional life. But when you're so used to providing for yourself as a woman, you lose that feminine touch in you. And I think when it comes to my dating life, I've mostly attracted narcissists because of this reason. I guess because narcissists want to go for the strong independent woman. They want something out of that relationship. Basically want to use her and manipulate her. It's an ego boost for them to manipulate such a successful woman. But when it comes to men who actually want to love you and care for you, those men don't care about how much you make, what you do, because they know that they have to provide because they are the man in the relationship, regardless of what you make. I wish I had known this sooner, but now that I do know, I'm just not really about that independent woman life. As a woman, I just want to be that nurturing spirit around a man. Not any man, I mean my partner. And I want him to lead. Not saying that I can't lead, but I'm just saying that as a woman, it's not my job to provide. My job as a woman, organically, is to nurture. You can disagree if you want, but I'm just talking from experience. Wow. She says she thinks this whole independent woman S is a scam. That's how she started that video. <laughs> I wonder how long it took her to come to that revelation how old she was when, you know, those thoughts started to come around in her head. Was it an experience that she had? Yes, it was. Because she said that she was speaking based off of her experience. Hmm. But what was so profound to me in that particular video is that she said, when you, so used to providing for yourself as a woman, you tend to lose that feminine touch. But when you're so used to providing for yourself as a woman, you lose that feminine touch in you. That's deep. Another thing she talked about, you know, when she said that a man, if a man really loves you and cares for you, he doesn't matter how much you make. So you can be a successful woman. He doesn't care how much you make. He doesn't care about any of that. He just wants to be the provider. She says she wished she had known that earlier. I wish I had known this sooner, but now that I do know, I'm just not really about that independent woman life. So I wonder how old she is now. She looks like she's about in her 30s. And I hope it's not too late for her because see, when a woman reaches her 30s and you know, the midpoint, that's not the midpoint, but in her 30s, you know, um, she tends to be, <laughs> A little less, uh, I wouldn't say desirable, but the competition is pretty heavy out there as far as the young women is concerned, you know? Yeah. And also, too, you know, men are more demand than women. <laughs> we are. And the reason why is because the deficiency of men due to war, uh, you know, due to disease, due to jail, uh, incarceration, and also, too, due to men that... Um, don't want to exercise being a male anymore, you know, um, based on whatever reason they, they might have. So the numbers are very thin, you know. So I, this woman, you know, she's very mature. And see, when I talk about a mature woman, that's what I mean, mature. She, she her mind, you know, but unfortunately, you know, for most women, it takes that long, when I say that long, I'm talking about going through their 20s and then they're into their 30s, maybe in their mid-30s, and they start to realize like, hey, you know, um, I, I better change something. You know, ladies, look, all I'm saying is this, listen to this, this woman, you know, because she says she's speaking from experience. Now, she says she doesn't, want, she doesn't want to be the one, basically, I'm just putting in my words, to lead. She wants the man to lead. She says she's tired of providing for herself. But, you know, I had talked to this guy today out in the public, and I found it very interesting, the conversation, because he said he and his wife had um, just gotten divorced, divorced, and they've been together 16 years. I was like, wow, man, really? He's like, yeah. He said, yeah. Um, so basically, she got new on him. He put her through school, college, and she's an eye surgeon, and he was telling me how he you know, supported her and this and that, and I believe, you know, financially and, you know, emotionally and all that stuff. And, and yes, women are a reflection of their men. 
in their community. And that is true. But also too, there, you know, when you when you, when we talk about reflection, there's good reflections and there's bad reflections. And what's going on today, as far as the women being a reflection of their men, is unhealthy. It is unhealthy. It's, it's unhealthy and it's superficial. The reason why I say that is because it has taken the reflection today of women to their men is has taken them out of their their whole nature of being a woman. Now I'm talking about the modern minded woman now. I'm not talking about every every woman. Okay? It has taken out of their elements, taken them away from their elements as far as being a natural woman. You know? They have created this and they call it a male energy. Yes, it's a male energy. Now there's a lot behind that, you know, because you got in some societies, men, you know, treat their women like property. And women are human just like men. After a while, if you if you treat a person like, you know, <laughs> like this, second class or they're nothing, you know what I'm saying? Or they're property. They're going to look at themselves as not, I'm not a psychologist, but I'm seeing it like this. They're going to look at themselves and say, okay, you know what? I'm not worthy of being a woman, so why, I, why not try to be a man? Try to be like them. Try to have what they have. Then I'll probably get some respect. Psychological thing going on here, you know? So this is an unhealthy reflection. It really is. You know? Role play is very important. That's why it's very important for a two-parent family. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a two-parent family. I got to see the role play of my dad, and I got to see the role play of my mother. I got to see the interaction, interaction between a man and a woman. Not many people get to, to experience that. So therefore, there's some deficiencies in their characters and, 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 and within them. You know, because see, it's very important for a young man to see, have a father in his life. Even if the father's not a talkative man and he doesn't know how to, you know, communicate with his son well, all his son has to do is look at his dad. And if this dad has good character, you know, and, and is, it, good qualities, he's going to pick that up. And he's going to mimic. He's just going to see him as far as the man he is. He's going to learn from that. Same as the daughter. The father's just as important as the daughter because she's going to, you know, later on in her life when she started dating men and start seeing men, she's going to, and if her dad's a good man with good character, and good qualities, she's going to measure every man up against that man, of uh, uh, her dad. <clears throat> and if they don't meet the foot the bill, then hey, you know. So it's like an automatic default. When, you know, girls that grow up with dads in their household, and they can measure all these guys to their dads. It's a default, you know. It's a no-brainer. Unfortunately, for Girls that didn't have their dads in the household and, 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 and boys that didn't have their, their fathers in the household and they were growing up, there's something missing from them. They're not so much their character, but their, their substance, so to speak. You see what I'm saying? So as a result, from this, from this deficiency of one parent missing in the household, the girls are picking the wrong guys because they have no, no model growing up to measure these guys up to. And the boys, they have wrong, they pick out the wrong women when they grow up because they never seen the interaction between their dad and their mom and the type of mother that their dad had and how he dealt with in a relationship. Now, growing up in a single, you, some might say, yeah, well, as a single parent, his mom is there. Yeah, his mom is there, but she's single. So he's seeing no interaction. All he's seeing is a, is a woman in his life. You know, which is his mom. But there's no interaction. There's no balance. And that's what's going on today with these men and women. That's, just, that's exactly what's going on today. And, you know, of, of reasons might be different from person to person, but nevertheless, there's an imbalance. Imbalance. You have your yin and you have your yang. You have your male and you have your female. The opposites are not lining up. Because one opposite is trying to be like the other opposite. And it's trying to line up. And, it, and it's causing problems. You know? Not just physically, but energy-wise in this world, in this, you know, on this planet. You know, particularly in, you know, where we live. Anyway, that's all I have to say about this. Hope I didn't run my mouth too much. As a woman, I just want to be that nurturing spirit around a man.
not any man, I mean my partner, and I want him to lead. Not saying that I can't lead, but I'm just saying that as a woman, it's not my job to provide. My job as a woman, organically, is to nurture. You can disagree if you want, but I'm just talking from experience. Click share!